What I'm about to share with you has raised my personal pissed off meter on a scale of 1 to 10 to at least a 12. Scammers on a global scale are now posing as assistance organizations for scam victims, agencies that claim that they can help victims recover their money and or take legal action against scammers. And as you might have guessed, it's not true. Um, essentially, they're re attempting to re-scam scam victims, which I think is close to the scale of how atrocious and despicable the grandparent scam is. So stay tuned throughout all this video. I'm going to tell you how the scammers are doing this, how they're posing as legitimate agencies, how they're spoofing phone numbers and email addresses, what to look for in terms of their messaging, most importantly, how to keep you and loved ones safe. It's human nature to trust organizations we feel are trustworthy. And scammers are counting on that. Um, it's what's called authority exploitation. So posing as legitimate agencies such as banks or government agencies, realize that scammers and cyber criminals can spoof phone numbers. So you might receive a call that looks like it's from the Social Security Administration. Very likely it can be a spoofed number. You might receive an email from Sam. Very likely it's a spoofed email. Um, so that's your first clue to do, investigate further. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But what they're doing is combining authority exploitation with emotional manipulation tactics. Fear, urgency specifically. These things combined make their attacks much more potent and increase the likelihood of their success. Let's talk about the different phases of these types of scams. So the initial phase, the scam phase before the re-scam phase. Uh, for an example, they might pose as your bank and they might reach out and contact you and say, hey, you're part of a security breach and we're notifying you. We need you to go online. We need to be able to see your account. Uh, you need to share your screen with us. We're going to take a look at your banking information, which enables them to manipulate the HTML code to make it appear as if something has happened. Or without taking those steps, they might ask you to verify a security code or personal information. This is all used um, to uh, facilitate identity theft, amongst other things, right? Um, one such example of this phase one type of scam so the country of Australia recently launched a national anti-scam center called NASC for short. And what they found is that cyber criminals are posing as NASC employees. They're proactively reaching out to people, indicating to them that their phone number, which remember, all this information has been leaked on the dark web. AT&T alone, 110 million subscribers of their cell phone services last week were notified that their phone numbers, their associated landlines, and all their text messages were now available being sold on the dark web based on that hack. So scammers already have your phone numbers. They're going to use these as validation points to uh, convince you that they're legitimate. But what they're saying is that phone number, as an example, has been associated with and involved in a scam in the country of China, and they offer help to clean up your record. And of course, there's a cost associated with that assistance, right? Um, the goal is they're gonna access, uh, they're either gonna get payment for you, they're gonna ask to asset, access your banking information, uh, whether it's identity theft or financial fraud, that's the underlying goal of these types of scams in the phase one. Consistent with the practices of most legitimate organizations, NASC, as an example, never asks for personal information. They will never ask for financial information. They will never ask for money. And most importantly, all their initial communications come by way of email from their official email account. And that's consistent across many companies. So. If you happen to be approached by one of these phase one scammers, um, you know, posing as legitimate agencies, number one, disconnect the call. Number two, go to their website. First, take a look at their communication policies. 
As an example, there are many scammers that pose as uh, Microsoft agents claiming that your system has an issue and they're reaching out to resolve it, whether it's a security breach, compromised application, whatever the case may be. Microsoft as a policy will never reach out to you proactively. They only contact you in response for a request you initiate. So when you go to these organizations' websites, government, banking, technology, whatever it may be, look at their communication policy. You'll immediately know if it's likely that they could have reached out to you. And if you have any doubt or any question in your mind about whether this was a legitimate call or not, use their public, publicly posted phone number. Call that number. Tell them what had occurred. Tell them about the phone call you received. And ask them to, if they're actually officially reaching out to you or not. And every likelihood is that it's not them. And this is where my blood starts to boil because we're going to talk now about the phase two aspect. This is the re-scanning of scam victims, which is what raises my piss off factor to 12. Um, so I want you to realize, first of all, we talked about in phase one some examples of legitimate organizational scams, banks, government institutions. But in the re-scam phase two element, we're not limited to that, right? So in previous episodes, I've outlined how pig butchering uh, occurs and how victims are scammed. In one case that I cited out of $1.2 million in 30 days. Romance scams, investment scams, grand, grandparent scams. Um, there are many different types that I've outlined in previous episodes. If you have been victim to one of those scams, realize that the scammers have your information. They know what was taken from you. They have assessed you financially. And if there is additional money to be scammed from you, that's when the re-scam comes in and literally just makes my blood boil. Unbelievable. So using emails, phone calls, text messages, social media outreaches, and messaging sites such as WhatsApp or Signal. Um, that's how they're going to reach out and communicate to you. And they're posing as government agencies, cybersecurity organizations, fund recovery services, legal services, lawyers and other, right? Consumer advocacy groups and charities. All with the promise of being able to get your money back. Really what they want is more money. Let's talk about it. These phase two scammers are not limiting themselves to cold outreaches. No, they're actually just boldly creating ads in Google for legitimate looking scam um, recovery uh, services. And when you do a Google search, you've fallen victim to a scam and now you're searching the web to say, okay, what do I do about it? And how do I get my money back? The ads that you're seeing and the websites you're seeing listed in that Google search could very well be the scammers themselves. Just disgusting. Just disgusting. And here's what's common to these scams, these phase two scams. They're going to ask you for upfront money. Upfront money either as a retainer fee or a percentage of lost revenues based on how much you lost to the scam. They're going to ask you for tax payments for those monies. They're going to ask you for um, retainers for attorney services with the promise of successful litigation. And then they're going to ask you for personal details. Um, pretending to be verifying that you are who you say you are, but in fact using that information to dig deeper into identity theft. They may set up a crypto wallet for you to make that payment. That's again a vehicle to take your money. They may even request remote access to your computer. Realize that they are employing very sophisticated technologies to uh, enact these scams. Um, voice and video cloning, phone number and email spoofing to make them appear legitimate. And if you don't think you can fall victim to uh, voice cloning, video cloning, let me tell you two quick stories. A Pennsylvania couple, and I detailed this in one of my previous episodes, received a call from a police officer who indicated that 
their daughter was under arrest, that she had been drunk driving and hit a vehicle with a pregnant mother and a child and killed both of them. They put the daughter on the phone, which was a voice cloned interpretation of the daughter's voice, so convincing that the couple said, she cried like our daughter, she sounded like our daughter under stress, we were convinced it was our daughter. $34,000 later the next day, they discovered that it was a scam. A woman in South Korea received a direct message on social media from someone presenting themselves as, of all people, Elon Musk. Eventually, after back and forth exchanges, the woman was invited to a video call with this purported Elon Musk and was so convinced that it was Elon Musk that when he made romantic advances, she bought into it and thought she was about to have a relationship with Elon Musk. $50,000 later, she realized she'd been scammed as well. So their techniques, the cyber crime as a service software products that are out there are making it so much easier, so much quicker, so much less expensive and so much more convincing for these scammers to appear legitimate to you that you need to take some time to understand how all this works and previous episodes will help you do that. With regard to phase two scams, the sad reality is this. If you've been scammed out of money, you can rarely, if ever, recover that money. And in fact, only law enforcement uh, has the power and authority to go after agencies. But the reality is, once you've been scammed, let's say you're in the US, once you've been scammed, that money is immediately transferred overseas and maybe to multiple different accounts, making it untraceable. So the likelihood is, the very high likelihood, you're not gonna get your money back. And these re-scammers that are promising you outcomes are simply lying to you to get more money. In the initial scam, they determine how much, how many resources you have available to you, how much funding you have available to you. They've gotten as much as they could on the initial phase one scam. They're coming back to get the rest on phase two. The other sad reality is most, if not all of the things they promise to do for you, you can do for yourself for free. They will ask for exorbitant fees, always upfront payments, promising outcomes without delivering specifics, pressuring you to make a decision, threatening you that if you don't take action immediately, you're at further risk. And all these things combined, that emotional manipulation along with the Im uh, implied authority that they bring to the equation are all designed to get you to take the action they need you to, which is sending them more money. In closing, the cyber threat landscape has evolved exponentially. With the advent of AI, cybercrime as security products, organized crime, which I detail in a previous episode, organized crime creating literal scam farms. In the country of Myanmar alone, there are an estimated 120,000 human trafficking victims, and this is according to the UN, 120,000 human trafficking victims who are locked up in compounds, given scripts, playbooks, managers, and quotas. And these are the folks reaching out to you. Make no mistake, it's not a one-off person sitting in their mom's basement reaching out to you from their computer. Organized crime is behind the majority of these um, scam activities. And with the proliferation of tools and the advancements in technology, they're much better than ever before and they're continuing to improve, which means we need to up our game. We need to stay informed. We need to stay vigilant. We need to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe. My name is Philip Mackel. I am a five-time published author and host of the Muddy Waters podcast and YouTube series. If you got something from this, I hope you'll click the thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, I hope you'll subscribe as well. Please share this with friends and family if you think the information can benefit them. Please stay safe and please join me for future episodes. Thank you so much.